Hey, what's up? It's Randy and welcome back to another video. Now we're going a little bit off script today. I've got a new microphone up here on the stand for you guys to check out. This is the Boya BYM1000 large diaphragm condenser microphone. Now you guys might remember about a year ago, I did a review of the Boya BYDM500 dynamic microphone, which is sort of like an SM7B type microphone. And I was a little skeptical to review it at first, um, but after testing it out, I was really surprised with the results. This microphone has one fatal flaw, however, and I unfortunately think that this microphone falls into the same category. So we'll cover that today, but first let's talk about what comes in the box. So you'll receive the microphone itself, which is quite a heavy, large diaphragm condenser microphone. It is metal and it feels pretty well built. It has a shock mount system, which is also metal and attached to that is a plastic pop filter. Now, funny enough, I actually already stepped on this and broke the pop filter off, which says nothing about the quality of the microphone and everything about the quality of my ability to move around in my studio properly without breaking things. In the B-roll shots, you'll notice that there's some super glue tacking this on. It is what it is. On the microphone body, we have access to three different controls. We have a zero dB to negative 10 dB pad which is great if you have really loud sources, you can record drum sets, stuff like that. It's gonna be great for that. We also have a low cut filter on the underside here at 150 Hertz. And you can hear a little bit low end in my voice. There's proximity, a little bit less low end in my voice, less proximity. On the front side, we have a polar pattern selector, which is fantastic. And you can hear when I switch it to, let's go to figure eight or bi-direct. And you can hear there's a, a second of noise there. So it's almost like there's a digital component inside the microphone that's switching over. Uh, and we'll go to omnidirectional. And you can hear it switches there. Okay, yeah, that's quite a bit more room in that sound. Check, 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 check. And we'll switch back to cardioid. Check, 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 check. Yeah, quite a bit less room in cardioid. Now this is an XLR microphone, so it is going to require a interface to provide it with phantom power. As well, you're gonna need a way to get that XLR signal into your computer or into your recorder. So I'm just gonna rhyme off a couple of the other stats of this microphone here. So this is a 34 millimeter diameter, which if you compare that against other microphones, it's actually a very large, large diaphragm condenser. As you get larger with the diaphragm, it tends to roll off some of that top end just because it's not quite as good at picking up those nuances because of the size of the diaphragm. But I'm actually hearing a lot of sizzle on those S's. So to me, it sounds like a, what I would expect from a large diaphragm condenser. The total output impedance is 200 ohms. Do with that as you will. And one last stat that I think is relevant here is this microphone is 812 grams or 29 ounces, which when I pulled it out of the box, it's, it's thick. Okay, this brings me to the one fatal flaw that both the BYDM and the Boya BYM1000 have in common. And that is, that is really tough for me to deal with and to recommend to other people. So that's like a ground loop that's happening. And typically this happens when there is cheaper components inside of the microphone um, that don't balance the signal properly you run into a bit of a ground issue. Now it's really unfortunate because this microphone sounds, check, 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 quite nice and crispy. It's got three polar patterns to choose from, which is gonna make it great for music recording. Of course, when you're recording, you're probably never touching your microphone, so it's not a huge deal. But this is something that I would expect if I'm paying about $100, $120 for this microphone, I would expect it not to have any ground issues. Really happy with the sound quality. The hardware feels pretty good. I like that it's all metal. The feel of the build of the microphone is quite good. It feels quite robust. The connections, they feel great, uh, exceptional even. The buttons, like the little switches on here, feel, they feel like they're, probably the cheapest part of the microphone. And the fact that it does this whole switching segment when you switch, it doesn't it doesn't feel like nice quality uh, when that happens. And then the whole issue with the, overall the sound quality is great. If you're not gonna be touching your microphone and you're just gonna leave it in the same spot and record you know, your guitar every day or what have you, sounds pretty good. But let's finish off today's video with some sound samples. Thanks for watching the video and enjoy the samples.